Uh, as we enter into uh, the service today, today's uh, a little different. We're going to recognize and remember uh, a life of one of our members, Carol Mills. Uh, and uh, Steve's going to share a little bit more. But one of the things about Carol, I've known her for uh, the last uh, over 12 years that I've been here. And uh, every time over the last uh, three or four years that she was unable to, to come out and she was at home, every time I visited with her, there was always one constant in our conversations. And the constant was always this. Her, um, her confession, but it was also, I'd say it was this, just this very simple reminder that I needed to hear. And every time we gathered, she always talked about, you know what, Jesus loves me, and he's here with me, and I can't wait to go and be with him because he loves me, and he is my friend, and I look forward to spending all eternity with him. And I thought, yes, that is absolutely it. The last few months uh, that she was uh, in uh, a care, care facility, we always closed our visits together with singing of that simple song. It's a song uh, that was wrote about 160 years ago. Uh, it was penned by an author who was asked to write a song for a story that a, a Sunday school teacher was writing for a sick child in her Sunday school class. And she said, in the story, I want a grown-up, an adult, to come and pray and be with this child and to offer them some comfort. And so if you could, please write a song that will speak to children that's simple but yet full of the story of God and his love for humanity. And so the song was penned, Jesus Loves Me. Later, uh, a chorus was put to it and the tune that we know of today. There's a movie out called uh, Ragamuffin that highlights the life of Rich Mullins. And Rich Mullins was uh, a, a passionate follower of Christ. He had a number of issues. He dealt with alcoholism, and he dealt with uh, his relationship with his family and his father. Uh, and he had his own demons that he chased down. But he had this beautiful gift of music and of finding uh, this beautiful way to, to articulate the truth of scriptures in his gift of music. And he said in one of his concerts, he said, uh, Carl Barth was speaking. Uh, is actually speaking at the University of Chicago on a lecturing tour. Carl Barth is one of our greatest theologians, uh, pastors, and minds of the 20th century. But he was doing a lecturing tour in the 60s, and he stopped at the University of Chicago to give his tour. And he spoke, and then at the end of that, there was a question and answer session. And in uh, the session, a student stood up and he said, Carl, if, or, uh, Dr. Barth, if you could if you could capture the fullness of your teachings and your theology uh, in a simple word or two or phrase or two, could you, what would you say that is? And Karl Barth said, well, it's a, it's a theology that I learned at the knee of my mother and I've held since the beginning of life. And it is simply these words, that Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. We often uh, get real fancy and real creative, and maybe too creative for our own good, where we, we try to find new ways to share of God's love and God's story. But the reality is, if we go back to some of these root things, these hymns that we sing today, they articulate the vastness of God's love in very many different ways. The prayer we started with, the prayer that says uh, from St. Patrick's breastplate of righteousness, a prayer that's been around for, for 1,500 years, begins each stanza of that prayer, I arise today. That in and of itself, that simple phrase is a worship service all in its own. I arise today. Not by my own will, not by my own volition, not by my own creation, not by my own desires, not by my own uh, efforts or wants, but simply as a gift and a blessing that God has given me. And so these songs and this phrase, they carry this, this theological weight, yet it's such in simple terms that anyone can understand it. Yes, Jesus loves me. And oftentimes we complicate it or we weigh it down and, and we make it so much more as we try to really... Uh, perceive and dig into the depths of God, but Carol knew the beauty of that simple treasure. 
Jesus loves me. In the bulletins that are on your table, I, I pulled out some scriptures this week that go to the Bible, this Bible that this song talks about, because the Bible tells me so. Well, in Scripture, it reminds us of that love that God has for us. And how often we quickly forget this, right? We think, oh, God is angry, or God is wrathful, or God is looking to judge us, or punish us, or hurt us, or do all these mean and nasty things to us because we see few verses that are there, or that's the way God or the community of God has acted in the stories. And we seem to forget or glance over or ignore the fullness that the text has where it speaks of how much God does, in fact, love us. I want to share some of these, and I think pieces of information that they communicate. Galatians 2.20, my old self has been crucified with Christ. We've been talking about this, right? Dying, taking up our cross, dying to ourselves and letting ourselves be resurrected in Christ. And so our old self has died. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And so I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If anyone knew this, it was Paul. Paul had this amazing confirmation story of, of conversion where, where he was blinded by the light of Christ, and Christ said, why are you persecuting me? And we see in, in Paul this, this dramatic change from who he was to after that experience of who he became in the church. And I, I love this story, but at the same time, that story of conversion is not my story. My conversion story is more like Peter's where I continue to make these bold statements of faith for God, and then at the next moment or the next breath, I turn around and fail or disappoint God, and Christ looks at me and says, were you of little faith? I echo with Peter's story, but the stories are the same because the stories are about us offering ourselves to die so that Christ can help us to rise again day in and day out. I arise today. Revelation 1.5, and from Jesus Christ, he is the faithful witness to these things. The word witness in the Greek is the word uh, where we also get martyr. And when we think of martyr, we often think of someone who was killed for their beliefs, standing on principle and letting their life be taken from them. But the word martyr is much simpler. Again, go back to a simpler understanding. The word martyr sim simply means one who is marked. One who bears the mark, one who bears that sign, one who, who bears this image. What image? The image that God has placed within us in Genesis. And so when we go out as witnesses, we are going out as ones who bear the mark, that we must remember we are martyrs, not people that necessarily are being killed or crucified or lives are stripped from, but one who go out and live their lives as one who is identified in the image of God. So Jesus Christ was this witness to these things, the first to rise from the dead and the rule of the king of the world. All glory to him who what? loves us, and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. Man, we don't, we, I don't think we understand freedom. In America today, we talk of freedom. Our, our patriotism is, is bound up in our freedom, and we, and, we, and we talk about it's a freedom to be defended and fought for and sacrificed. But the freedom that Scripture speaks of is at a whole nother level, a freedom to not be bound by identities that's don't help us to identify that mark. It's a freedom that comes by not having to have our way or to control others or to diminish others or to defeat them or put them down, but one that comes from not having to be in control because we allow God to be in control. Matthew's teachings on we don't have to worry, but we can follow him. So when we get to that place of freedom, we truly let whatever God has for us be that gift, be it good or be it challenging or be it frustrating. God is present there. As we arise today, God is in that day. And even though we may pass through storms, he calls us not to end the storm, but to make sure that we have a faith that pers perseveres through the storm. 
It's a faith that has strength and endurance. John 15, boy, if any of the writers of the Scriptures spoke more of love, it was John. Love this and love that, but in a love that I think also we miss, we don't understand today. He said this, I have loved you. This is Jesus speaking to His disciples at the Last Supper. I have loved you how? As the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love just as I obey the Father's commandments and remain in His love. I told you these things so that you may be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment to love each other in some way, in the same way that I have loved you. Here's the, here's the great thing. This song, Jesus Loves Me, it doesn't stop with me. When I remain, when I sit in that love, that love naturally will overflow into others' lives. It's the beauty that we often overlook, I think, in the Lord's Prayer that I've spoken of. When the Lord's Prayer, we start with the simple phrase, Our Father. Not my Father. Not your Father. But collectively, our Father. And when I approach that, uh, my, my spirituality and my God in that way, then I'm acknowledging that there are other people that are here that are coming in that same spirit of our Father. And so the love that I sit in and that I remain in, I want them to sit and remain in that love as well, even when they can't grasp it. Paul, back to Paul in Romans, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. The beauty of that love is it loves us right where we're at. It doesn't wait for us to improve. It doesn't wait for us to get better. It doesn't wait for us to change. It doesn't wait for us to prove ourselves or to have some merit or some reason in which it was given. But while we are wretched, despicable, ragamuffin messes, God loves us right where we are and nowhere else. But he's got more for us, right? That's the beauty of love. I love my children. But I want them to continue to grow and to mature, and I want them to experience the fullness that this life has to offer and that God has to offer them. And so if they matured no further than they are right now, I would, they would grow up and be miserable, incompetent adults, which sounds harsh, but is the reality. And wouldn't it be the same of our Father in heaven if we as those believers don't mature in that way that he's called us to as we remain in his love? so that we grow to this place of maturity and responsibility and of wisdom and discernment in our lives to make sure that we're practicing these things moment by moment. And then we get to the one that we all know, John 3, 16. But God showed his great love for us. Sending Christ to, oh, sorry. God showed his great love for us. that He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Perish uh, means uh, to, to fade away, to burn up, to go without. It, it carries the idea of, of, um, of uh, impure metals being passed through a fire, that they'll get burned up and, and burnt off, and so that, that thing which, only, uh, which is pure will remain. We, uh, we used to have a shirt here at Faith that on the back, uh, there was a phrase right in the middle that just said, Love the world. Uh, we went to a teen mission camp in Missouri, and I had that shirt on. And we were eating dinner uh, and, uh, at, the, at the camp, and uh, as I was finishing, I was cleaning off the plate, and one of the staff of the campground, uh, he came up to me and he said, hey, I, I saw your shirt, and I had a question for you. And I said, yeah, what is it? And he said, it's, it says love the world. And I said, yeah. And he says, aren't we called to not love the things of this world? And I said, uh, it's true, we're not. We are, we are called to do that. Um, I, I said, but there's also this verse that says, for God so loved the world. And he, and he kind of froze, like he's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Right? And I, I said, there's a difference between loving people and loving the world and loving the things that God loves. And then in turn, loving the things of the flesh that, that tend to disrupt and deceive and pull us away from that true love that he offers. Most of us don't change 
if we're in an environment where we feel uh, judged, uh, demeaned, labeled, or named, I, I know I've never, I know I have never changed my behavior when I've been in that type of environment. Yet when I knew that I was loved and affirmed, even if I was told harsh things, that those people that I knew they loved me, if I knew them telling those hard things were, were, were as hard, difficult for them to say it as it was for me to hear it because they were, they were approaching me with this loving graciousness, then I knew that that had an effect on us and our relationship. And I knew that I often wanted to modify the way that I was behaving, the habits that I was living out, because I knew I wasn't living into their love. Christ is calling us to live into his love, live into his being. And so he approaches us with this gracious, loving kindness. He gives us the church, which is to be this body of believers that is supposed to practice and show that with one another, but also then go out and show the world what that looks like because the world doesn't understand or know what that looks like. And the church hasn't always done a good job of showing them. And so we must practice that with ourselves, being willing to approach one another in loving grace and correction as we help and urge people to mature in their faith, not to grow up and, and, and remain as spiritual infants. And then John closes, again, Jesus speaking at the Last Supper with his disciples. And so I now give you this new commandment that you would love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Nothing needs to be said. Let's pray. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. May you be filled with the awareness that Jesus loves you and that the Bible is there resonating and reiterating and shouting that story of God's love in your life and your life in the world. May God be with you. Go in God's peace.